Okay, so hey everybody, it's Mr. Bills again, and this is uh, section 10-5, um, something called permutations and combinations. And basically, I'm going to try and give you a little rundown of uh, what a permutation is, what a combination is, and, and, uh, and that thing. So let's start off with three people. Let's start off with Alan and Bob, and um, let's go... Uh, Candice, or Candy, we'll call it, call it Candy. So just trying to do short on the names for it. And I'm going to say that I want to know uh, how many different ways because they enter the room. And we agree, I believe, that uh, Alan could go first and Bob could go second and Candy could go third, just like this, ABC. I agree that uh, Candy could go first, Bob could go second, and Alan could go third. I agree that Alan could go first, Candy second, Bob. I agree that this, um, Candy, Alan, and Bob, and Bob could finally go first, and then Alan and Candy, and Bob could go first again, and then Candy could go second, and Alan third. So uh, what we're talking about is different ways to be able to organize groups of people. Now, if I said that uh, I was going to take three friends on the thing, uh, this trip, and Alan, Bob, and Candy were going to go, then this uh, A, B, and C doesn't matter, okay, the order doesn't matter on that, okay, so if we're talking about uh, this thing called a permutation, P-E-R-M-U-T-A-T-I-O-N, a permutation, if we're talking about a permutation, then the order matters, that all of these things are different. If we're talking about something called a combination, then the order doesn't matter. And I know this is tricky because, you know, like you have, you know, you guys don't use them much. Uh, the combination lock, then the order in which you put the numbers in definitely matters. But mathematically speaking, uh, a combination um, is a situation where order uh, doesn't matter. So permutation, it matters. And they're different in a combination uh, uh, order does not matter not order here matters okay so uh, so it says an arrangement of objects in which order is important according to this first question uh, you have this which we just said doesn't matter. This one does matter, and probability is what we've been talking about for a while. So of course that doesn't uh, that doesn't make any sense there. Okay, so uh, as we go through, we're going to talk about something called uh, factorial. So first off, let's define what factorial is. Factorial is known by this exclamation point right here, and it's a mathematical symbol. And it means if I have four factorial, it means that I'm supposed to do the number four multiplied by the number three multiplied by the number two multiplied by the number one and i'm going to keep going down with uh the number right below the number i choose until i get there so four times three times two times one uh in this case equals four times three is 12 times two is 20, equals 24. okay so if i had to do like say 30 factorial which would be 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26 25 that would take a long time and if i was going to take this and put it into my calculator let me pull this up here i would do 30 type in 30 and then i have this little math button here so math and uh i got to just look through and one of these things is going to have an exclamation point and you'll see it's under this thing called probability and we're going to use the three of the first four of these things a lot right now so number four is that little, little exclamation point <laughs> that was really poorly pronounced exclamation point i'm gonna hit enter and then i'm gonna do that and you're gonna see it says that it's 2.65 i'm like well that's really small right but then you look all the way to the right here and it says e to the 32nd well that's just a reminder that's scientific notation which means i actually move this decimal place 32 places to the right and then you, all of a sudden you're like holy crap that is big 
Yeah, that is big. Um, 2.65 e to the 32. If you were talking about uh, dollars, okay, it would be more money that ha than has ever existed on uh, the planet Earth. All the money, everybody's money, add it all up. Bigger than all of that. In fact, um, if you were to give all the money that's ever been on the Earth to every single person who's currently on the Earth, it's still bigger than that. It's a flipping huge number. Okay? So, uh, so now we're going to come back to this, and we're going to talk about um, how to figure out some things called permutations and combinations, what they mean. So uh, there's a formula right here. Um, that if I was to take, um, let me just do it this way first. Let's take the word um, smile. Take the word smile. S-M-I-L-E. And if I said, uh, how many different combinations of these letters are they if I pick all five letters? Well, what I'm asking is, is five combination, and I'm going to pick five of them. Well, that means I can pick the S, the L, the I, the M, and the E. And since uh, order doesn't matter on this, there's only one possible way to be able to do that. Now, if I was to say, well, what if the order matters? What if S, M, I, L, E is different than S, M, I, E, L? That situation is considered a permutation. So I'm going to do 5 P. Five, I'm going to say, how many different ways are there to be able to do that? Um, and what I'm going to try and think about this way is, if there are five different letters, I have five choices for the first letter. I have four choices for the second letter. I have three choices for the third letter. I have two choices for the fourth letter. And then, now that I've used all four of them, I only have one choice left. And you can see that that's where that whole factorial thing comes into play. So I'm going to do some math. 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120. There is 120 different ways to be able to do that if I'm picking all five of the letters. So P, permutation, there's 120 possible different combinations of those five letters. And you're like, really? There is? I'd be like, yep, there really is 120. I'm not going to list them all out. But you can see right here that if I had three... P3, and I picked that, we said that that should be 3 factorial, or 3 times 2 times 1. And look at that, what is 3 times 2 times 1, but 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ta-da! And if I said, well, what about 3C? 3, well, there's only, if the order um, doesn't matter, there's only one of them. And look at that, there's the 1. So uh, it does match up with the smaller things just the way that we did. Now, how do I get uh, to show you something else? So let me show you this before we go to this problem. And NPR stands for how many numbers there are in your, um, in your pile to pick from. And R means how many are we going to pick. On this last one, we picked all five, right? All five of them from the five, all five of them from the five. But sometimes we're going to pick smaller amounts. So let's say that I did 5P2. And I was only picking two of those things out. So like in, and I'll try and write them down. I could do an S with an M. Or I could do an M with an S. Or I could do an M with an L. Or an M with an E. Or an E with an I. And there's going to be a bunch of them, and you could take your time to write them all down. And we're going to try and show you a formula right now that's going to work for this. So the NPR formula looks just like this. It's N factorial. If Again, if we're picking smaller amounts. If we're picking the same amount, we're going to just use the normal factorial. But if we're picking a smaller amount, this is what we do. We do N factorial over N minus R factorial. That's the formula. For NPR. So let's try it. So N is the number of items, so that's 5 factorial over 
5 minus, and we're picking two of them, 5 minus 2 factorial. So 5 minus 2 is 3, so it's 5 factorial over 3 factorial. And I'm going to show you this one, and then I'm going to clean some stuff up, and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, Mr. Bell, that's so cool. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And you're going to see, watch, boom, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. And there's actually going to be 20 of them. So right here, I listed 5, but we know there's going to be 20 of them. Okay? So here's the NPR formula. Here's showing you the math. And here's the total number of ways that I could pick uh, all of these different um, possible letters where order matters. Okay? There are 20 of them. Now, N... CR is a different formula. And CR means that right right here, do you see this? That S and M and M and S would be the exact same thing, right? Because the order um, for combinations doesn't matter with it. Where ML and ME, of course, would be different things because those are different letters. But S and M and M and S are different. So in this one, I believe, since all of these ones are going to have the reverse duplicates, but there's probably going to be 10 of them. If there were 20 in this, there's probably going to be 10 of these ones. So let's go ahead and do the math. And the formula for this one is uh, looks just like this. It's n factorial over r factorial, which is how many you're going to pick, times n minus r factorial. Is that okay? So basically what we're going to get out of that is that uh, n factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1, which is this, 2 factorial, right? Because I'm picking two things, times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, let's do some cancellations. 3 is canceled, 2 is canceled, 1 is canceled. Look at this. This 2 kills part of that 4. Uh, anything divided by 1 is just 1, so that doesn't really matter. So what I have is 5 times 2, which equals 10. And we were right. It works. So I can find out and that using this formula. Now, look. Big happy star for you. Our handy dandy calculators. Right here. I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay. We can focus on that. Look at this. Look at this. this math key that we used before for factorial. All the way over here to probability. Look at that. Number two and number three are those formulas, NPRs and NCRs. So we're not going to have to do all that long math that I did. We're just going to have to use these buttons. But I did want you to know where those buttons came from. Okay? So let's go to this problem right here and see if this helps you guys. Okay, so exercise two, the second one in the thing, said, um, I'll try and zoom that in a little bit, says seven factorial over two factorial times five factorial. So let's try this. So seven math, probability number four, seven factorial, divided by parentheses, because I need to do the whole bottom, two math, probability four factorial, times five math probability number four close parentheses now that equals 21 so i know this is 21. now i'm going to try 7c2 7c2 okay so seven i have to type in the number first right and then we go to right math over to probability Right, over to probability. I'm doing this NCR. So I hit that. Now yours, if you have an older calculator, it'll say NCR. And then I'm going to choose 2. And I'm going to hit enter. And it says it's 21 also. Sweet. So that means that these two numbers are the same. It says which of the following expressions not belong. Which means all you have to do is check these, that one of those two is not going to be the same. Okay? 
So I'm going to show you how to do it again with your regular math and see if this makes sense. 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 7 minus 2 is 5 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5's cancel. 4's, 3's, 2's, 1's cancel. 7 times 6 is 42. Check mark. There's your answer. That one is not the same. 7C5 and 7C2 actually kind of weird there is the exact same amount of them of course these things would have five uh, numbers in them or five letters in them these would only have two okay so i know this has taken a long time to do this first sheet and the rest of this is going to go a lot faster now but i wanted you to have some of that understanding so here we go so this first one says find the number of ways you can arrange all of the letters and then two of the letters in the word water the number of ways you can arrange all of the letters in the word is, so we're going to try and apply what we just did. So I'm going to ask you how many letters are here? And you're going to go, okay, there's five, right? So that's five. And if I'm arranging all the letters uh, in that word, um, then my question is, is this going to be a uh, permutation? Or a combination all the all the ways you can do it so w-a-t-e-r and r-e-t-a-w or i'm going to say are different so i'm going to say that this is a permutation when we're doing this permutation so 5p and i'm choosing all the letters so that's 5p5 and you can use your calculator to be able to do that this one says the number of ways you can arrange two of the letters well that's 5p two is that good and you can check those i bet you i give you nice little smiley green boxes in there which means uh, based on that that you should be able to do number seven that says family uh, you should be able to do number 12 that's just using uh, that symbolism and now we're going down to number 17 so it says 11 students are competing in an art contest so there are 11 total students and how many different ways can the students finish first, second, and third? So my question is, is first different than second? And is second different than third? Is first different than third? Um, like uh, in the Olympics, they give out a gold, a silver, and a bronze medal, right? Is there definitely a difference on which one you get? Uh, if we say who gets a medal, then sure, it doesn't matter, right? As long as they're just saying getting a medal. But if it's saying, man, I want gold, honestly, I'd take any of them. That should matter. So this should be a permutation. So on this one, I should have 11P3. Make sense? And then you do 11P3 on your calculator, plug that number into there, and you are all good. Okay. Uh, next one's kind of similar. It says six friends go to a movie theater, and how many different ways can they sit together in a row of six empty seats? Well, I believe uh, you have two options on that. Either order matters or order doesn't matter. And uh, if you, uh, like say Bob, like Susie, right? And you, uh, you went with Susie. I believe that Bob, you would want to sit next to Susie, right? So if it was bob and mark and tyler and fred and jose and then susie and those were the way you were sitting in the seats you'd be like dang i'm pissed because uh, i really like susie and for me the order and the people was sitting in here that's kind of sucks i really I really don't want to be there i want to be over here i want to be by susie uh, and you're going to say that the order matters so i'm going to say that this is a permutation and you can go ahead and do uh, that. Uh, plug that in there. Okay, number 19 uh, says this. This one's a little bit trickier uh, because it says probability now. So probability is uh, success, right? Success over total. And what we're going to use now is we're going to use these NPRs and NCRs to help us understand what a successful thing is and what a total thing is. So it says you and a friend uh, you and your friend are two of eight servers, so there are eight total servers, and you and a friend are two of them. Okay, so you're two of this, uh, two of this eight. 
At the beginning of the shift, the manager randomly assigns one section to each server. Find the probability that you are assigned section one. So maybe you're Al, you get section one, and uh, Tom gets section two. Is there any other way for uh, you to get section one and Tom to get section two? I'm going to say no. There's only one way, because that's specifically saying you have one and Tom has two. Okay, so successes. There's only one possibility there. Now, what are the total possibilities for section one and two? Well, that's eight P uh, two, right? So eight P two. There are, there are, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ones, right? It could be uh, Fred and Tom get one and two, and Sal and Tom get one and two, or uh, Al and Fred get one and two. So there are eight servers in two sections um, where order matters because you're only going to do this. So what I have to do is I have to simply do this, 8P2. That's my denominator, which technically means uh, we know that eight different people could get the first one and seven different people could get the second one. Eight times seven is 56, so one out of 56. And that's what we put in. Now, when you do this on your calculator, this uh, um, one out of 56, uh, it'll probably give you a decimal. So just so you know, on your calculator, handy dandy calculator, so if you do 1 divided by 56, if you put this all in and that's what it comes up to, you can hit math, and then this very first button here, number 1, fraction, and it'll re-change it into a fraction if it's a decimal that moves up. Okay, so you can do it just like that. Uh, so exercise 21 says count the possible combinations, so they say combinations, so now we're going to use C's of three letters chosen from A, B, C, and D. So how many letters are there? That's four, C, I'm gonna choose three. That's what that looks like. Then there's a couple more of these ones where you're just trying these things. But I do want you to understand again um, what these things mean, what these things mean. Because it's really easy to plug it in and just get an answer and move on. So what does this mean when I say four, C, three? So let's, first off, let's find the, find the answer to that one. So if I do 4C3, according to this, I believe uh, that should equal four possibilities. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and show you what those four possibilities are. So A, B, and C, that's one possibility, yes? A, B, and D, that's another possibility, right? And then uh, A and C and D, that's another possibility. And then... B and C and D. That's the fourth possibility. And there's no more. So when your calculator is actually telling you that there's four, and I'm showing you that there's four, that's what your calculator is doing, is finding how many there are of these. It, it can't list them, can't write them down for you because it doesn't know what you're choosing it from. But there's only going to be four of them. And you're like, well, wait, isn't there more of them? And you go, oh, I think that C, D, A is another one, right? CDA. And I go, well, wait, look, that one right there is already CDA. So for a combination, since the order doesn't matter, then this one and this one would be identical. So there are only four possibilities, and these are the four possibilities. Uh, everything else, everything else is just a different combination of one of those. Okay? So we are flying along here, and we got this one right here. And exercise 35 says, hey, it's another one of these ones. I try to put a lot of these in because I think it's good in math for us to be able to find our mistakes. Find our mistakes. So this says uh, we're supposed to do 11P7, and they say to do 11 factorial over 11 minus 7. And 11 factorial over 4 is equal to 9,979,200 different possible uh, possibilities. But it's wrong, right? So then one of these four things tells you why it's wrong. You just have to pick the correct one. Okay? And I believe if you look back at the formulas that I already gave you in the notes that you've been taking, you'll be able to see that one pretty easily. Exercise 37 says to complete an exam, you must answer eight questions from a list of ten questions. And how many ways can you complete the exam? Tell whether the question can be answered using permutations or combinations. Explain your reasoning. I know you can just put them in and try it. If it doesn't work, you just switch the switch the words, which 
again, crappy way to be able to learn. Uh, I know it gets you there, but hopefully we understand why it works. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one with you. So I got 10 questions. And I'm going to choose eight of them, right? So I'm going to choose eight of them to try and answer. So uh, sometimes I, I've done that on tests. Uh, none of you have been in the class, but I'll be like, here's three problems. You pick two of them. I don't care which two of the three that you do. Just pick two of them. So if you ended up choosing numbers one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, and uh, ten, that would be uh, that would be eight of those possibilities, right? Choosing eight of them, right? Good deal. Now, what if you instead chose two, one, four, three, seven, six, ten, and nine to do instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten? And uh, and then I go, well, wait, what? That that those are the what? Those are the same. I'm still I'm still doing those same eight problems. It doesn't matter which one I did first or second or third. It's just that I do them. So if it doesn't matter the order, then we know that this is really a combination problem, and you can use NCRs. Look at this. That takes you to the very last question on your stuff. Uh, read through it and just decide permutations or combinations and then get yourself a correct answer for that okay hoping this helps hoping this was really good for you uh, again uh, this mr. Bell's uh, take care uh, during these crazy times get credit for this class you can do it